Check it out. We got the shop at nighttime. Heck yeah. It looks awesome with these under lights. And the big plan is this will be now known as the Salvage Cave. So this will be the second shop for the YouTube channel. And I've already done quite a bit of work to it. I have cleaned and cleaned and cleaned and gotten rid of junk and junk. This lift used to be right here in the middle. It was literally starting to pull out on this side, the bolts, so the post was leaning. And it was still being used when I got the shop, but one of the first things I did was move it. So it's not anchored yet. It is where it's going to go. So instead of it being forward this way some, I centered it up under the peak of the roof, just like that one. So not only will we worry less about the back of a vehicle hitting the door, but it'll be further into the shop. You'll have more height just due to, you know, the ceiling being where it is. And so that's gonna be awesome. I am currently working on, so there was a huge crack that went that way and a crack that went behind. And right here, this square is where one of the original posts was for the previous roof. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut these red lines out with the saw and then I'm gonna pin it, basically drill rebar holes into the sides of the concrete before I put some additional rebar in the middle and then pour some high strength concrete. And I probably didn't need to do that or even tear out that much, but I really am gonna be moving some big machines around this and over this. I just don't wanna deal with problems later. Here's another one of the original holes for the roof post. Same with right here. And then the fourth one was over here. So those had mortar in them, but I took it out because it wasn't concrete and I wanted something stronger that could handle a machine or a, a jack rolling over it or a moving dolly or something heavy that is not gonna crumble when you put pressure and a pretty good size weight on it. So for right now, I haven't moved much down here. I've got some tools and things. I did buy these cabinets. A friend gave me this awesome roll around tool cabinet that's gonna be, I'm gonna use that all the time. And you know, I've got like a welder down here, but I don't wanna bring too much in here because the goal is to do some decorating. I want to make this whole wall look awesome. Same with this back wall. So I'm planning to try and do a huge pallet wall all the way across that, all the way to the peak and down. Along the back, I'd like to find some old barn siding, you know, the rusty tin, and kind of cover that, and maybe something along this wall. I haven't quite decided, uh, but for now, the goal was to get it clean, kind of start getting things to the point where we can get floors done, start working on the walls, get this lift anchored so it's usable. This will now be the open bay with no lift, so, you know, if I wanted to pull one of the track loaders in here or I wanted to pull the backhoe or whatever it is, this would be the bay without the lift. So it's a little bit wider and a little bit longer, deeper. This area, it was kind of the entry customer area. There was a couch right here and a little uh, like counter right there where you see the floor stains. Completely ripped all that out, cleaned it out. I re-poured the concrete underneath this little ramp because there was a rat hole and I, I did catch a rat right there. So the floor on this room, uh, it's seen better days. I think this is like a, some sort of a, a patch over the top of something even crappier. So I'm not sure I'm gonna deal with that because it's, you can just hear how hollow it is. And this floor here is much stronger. And then it comes over here and it gets a little bit a little bit more hollow there too. I will show you the fourth bay later, which is that side of it. And then in here, we've got the bathroom that, eh, I'm just gonna be honest, it was nasty. I cleaned the heck out of it. I already replaced the toilet there, the sink. You couldn't even see it, cleaned that. Still have to, I'm gonna completely rip out that vanity, rip the walls out and completely redo this. I wanna make it really cool. 
Uh, not to mention I want it clean and usable. So you look at this, tons of more room for projects. Three full bays, not to mention I could have a project in that area. I could separate it, have a project back in this area. You know, I mean, all kinds of places for setting up tools and toolboxes and welders, having a welding station. I don't have any major plans on what I want to do with this property other than to use it, number one, to work on machines. Number two, to use it to store machines. Because if you, if you come out back here, back here is the storage lot. So right along here, all the way to a back corner there across and then it goes all the way over there can't even see all the end to the end we're gonna fence in this whole place so i've already brought some machines down here got the wheel loader forklift the cab over semi we've got the service truck two of my trailers and the scissor trucks over there so this is somebody else's rv it will be leaving this is the pile of scrap metal that i pulled out of the building just in the cleaning process that is all going to be disappearing soon but back here you know is a whole nother opportunity for filming or storing a lot of the heavy equipment that you know I've, I've come across and that I continue to find and save so that's the plan back here yeah there's so many ideas so many options so many things that can be done in a in a space like this but I truly feel blessed to have it I'm excited to figure out how to use it and incorporate it into the channel incorporate it into the way I work so as you see that's that's the cave and for those that don't know why we call it the cave a friend of mine bought the building it was so packed full of stuff that and the lights were so dim and dull and you could not I mean this building looked nothing like it what it does now that it literally felt like being in a cave and they spent weeks upon weeks just emptying stuff out you couldn't even see the concrete floor it was so bad and so they named, named it the cave obviously this place looks amazing completely refinished new brand new roof brand new siding brand new interior lights mostly finished in there and so it's not a cave anymore but i truly want to honor the name i think it's cool plus it differentiates salvage workshop the shop itself versus the salvage cave which is this building here and so this will forever be known as the salvage cave the other shop is salvage workshop and that's how we'll tell them apart so i will use those names on the channel as i'm working at those locations but all right it's time to cut this out so i'm going to cut this red square and crayon out so i can re-pour that spot and then I'm going to re-pour all these footings for the previous thing. We're going to use the steel TS-400. This is my concrete demolition saw. I've used it for years. It was always a 12-inch saw until recently. I found a broken one. The body was all destroyed, but it had a 14-inch blade housing. It didn't have the blade in it, but I swapped it over. So now this baby's running a 14-inch blade, which... The reason that matters is you only really get on a 12 inch about like five and a half inches of cut depth. The 14 inch gets you to like six and a half, six and three quarters or something like that. So basically allows you to cut further down into a concrete slab or a concrete block or something without having to flip it or twist it or break it. So this will be the first maiden run with the 14 inch blade on it and the blade I had on a, on a concrete chop saw but I pulled it off that to use here. So see if we can get this old beast started and cut out a hole.
So we got that cut out. Now, I'm gonna use the demo hammer to chip it out. Some of these corners, I didn't wanna to cut too far into this, so I just made a score, and then I'm just gonna hammer down and try and break it off so that I'm not, you know, breaking off too far on the, on the edges or cutting past. All right, there we go. We got the square cut out. We are gonna use 5,000 PSI high strength concrete. So this stuff will set up harder than most of the other stuff. And I want that because if I am driving big heavy machines across this, I really don't want to worry about it getting all messed up, especially because this particular spot is such a small patch. So a bunch of rebars going in, not only through the, the field, but also into the all four sides of the existing concrete to try and bring it all and hold it all together. So get this all cleaned up and then that will be what we do next. All right. Got all the rebar cut and that's kind of the, the layout I'm going for. Obviously I want them to stick out about that far and then overlap each other and then we're going to stick some of this used i got a few pieces of used rebar that is still fine we'll put that in the field and we'll uh that'll really add some strength on top of that high strength concrete so now let's get to hammer drilling
That ought to strengthen it a lot. All right, here's where I'm at. Got all the grid in. Got each of these wired to the rebar going crossways. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put probably, I don't know, five to six vertical anchors going straight down. And then we'll pour the concrete. All right, took some time and I vacuumed out all of the dust from all the holes we drilled. I chipped out some of the stuff that was broken. Apparently the post was set on a cinder block that they only filled the center one. So that was full of dirt, that was full of dirt. So I got those pretty much all the way down to the bottom of the block. So no matter what, with all this rebar, not to mention filling all this stuff, this thing is going to be very strong. So let's get to mixing some concrete and get this poured. All right, for smaller pours like this, I like to just mix them up in mortar trays because this is not a very much concrete to mix. So why waste the time getting everything all out and set up? This is a mortar mixing trowel. And because it has the holes in it, it lets you basically mix and get the concrete and mortar all mixed up easier and faster because it kind of slushes through it. Um, and then these are concrete trowels. These are for mortar, but I use them a lot when I do small concrete pours um, just because sometimes it's nice to get into a corner or somewhere. So I'm gonna bust this bag open.
All right, there it is. Got it poured. And I may have to take a concrete grinder across it anyway, because the plan is to do an epoxy floor, but I also did all four, well, I guess three additional posts. So there's one there, and then the last one right here. So at least now the concrete that's in those will be a heck of a lot sturdier and able to handle being driven over by something heavy. Next up, we're gonna start turning our attention to the entryway here at the cave. And right now I've started to amass some cabinets. I've got some hardware and things, but it looks rough. The ceiling is pretty much like OSB that's been painted. We've got different materials that are just layered over one another. The concrete floor here has been basically skim coated with another layer of mortar that's cracking up. And I kind of just want this to look nicer. I want it to look industrial and usable. So the plan is to pull everything away from the walls and start with the wall coverings, kind of figure that out, and then work our way up towards the ceiling, kind of try and do some sort of a trim or a built-in workbench, and then organize and figure out where all of these cabinets full of hardware and tools are going to go. They're not necessarily going to go right here. This is just the easiest place to put them at the time. All right, quick update on the entryway here down at the cave. So what I've done is quite a bit actually so this wall was originally it stopped right about there and it was not flush with the remainder of this wall because when we redid this building this wall ended about right there and so we kicked it out a little further to give it more wall room in there a little bit more wall room in here but it stepped down like an inch and a half so i was able to shim and reframe up that wall so it's completely flush I removed all of the other paneling that was there to bring it down to flush. And there was two old electrical boxes that were not being used. And this is one of the old electrical panels that is also not being used. We're gonna leave them in there. Well, the holes are there, I took out the boxes, but we're gonna leave that box in there and just cover right over it. So the plan is to use some of this material. It's like a galvanized sheeting that I got for free and basically do about that height all the way along the base, do some sort of a chair rail, and then do another material above to be more decorative and whatnot. So I did all that. I pulled down the pegboard that was here and all of this concrete board all along behind these cabinets is gonna come down too, just haven't gotten to get to that wall. Over here, this wall was also extended. It used to end here and that room behind there is where the air compressor is. It's insulated and basically it's a heck of a lot quieter. Well, this was also not level. So I completely shimmed it, reframed up the inside of that. There was some termite damage. It, it, was just, it was bad. The other big thing is the light switch for the bathroom was always on the outside. And I couldn't stand that. So I fixed it. Got the light switch in here. And... Now I can do just sheet right over it and not have to worry about trimming out for it. Um, so I think I like that a lot better. And then I also framed in this corner. So this corner also, it basically kind of stepped back and then there were some uh, two buys that were put together to build like a header for this corner. So I framed that up, capped the end of it so that I can bring the sheeting all the way straight across the corner and go wrap right around into this all the way down. So right now what we're gonna do is, I'll show you. So as you can see, right at that level, this will be the height of the metal along the bottom. So that will give me a way to essentially get it all at the same level all the way around because the biggest problem with this building and this center section of this building is nothing is square at all you have to literally, like even to cap this end here, I had to cut the boards and then I had to sh shave the edges because it was like eight and a half there and, and almost nine and a half there. And so even if you cut that perfectly at an angle, stuff's still not perfect. So regardless of that, this is how we're gonna get the wall covering at the same height all the way around and try and bring some of the look back into square. We'll cover up the old and we'll make it look better. All right, so these are the galvanized sheets that I have, and they were sitting in a pile, basically 
at this company that I bought a bunch of stuff from after they went out of business. And they've got some surface rust on them. They've got some dirt. They're not perfect, but I like that. I like the patina. I like, I almost wish there was more, but it's what I've got. And the goal here is to use materials that I've salvaged or gotten very cheap um, to do my best to make this place look awesome. The other option I have is these, uh, these red ones. It's like a maroon. It's maroon on one side. It's white on the other. And so somewhere, got a, quite a few of those, we'll probably be using these red ones as well. So for now, we're going to use these to cover the wall in that first room all the way around the bottom. we go we'll clean that up make it look a little nicer I like the rustic patina on that piece and we'll just keep working our way around I know it may not look good to you yet but I promise by the time I'm done you'll like it Smoking. We're gonna finish the thing. Maybe not. I have another one of these. Let's try it. Well, that one worked way better. Boom. All right, quick update on the cave down here. So here is what I'm thinking for the walls. I am trying my best to do this with salvaged material. A lot of this galvanized, basically sheet metal was just sitting in a pile outside. And some of it has surface rust like this, which I actually, I love it. I, I really, really like it. And so I got that, I got all this like uh, rounded angle iron. I'm not exactly sure what it's for, but it's gonna make perfect uh, corner beads, corner trim pieces. So I've got it all the way around all these, and I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna fix it. Right now I've just got two trim nails uh, nailed in through the trim corner piece just to hold it there because I still have to figure out what I'm gonna put above the galvanized lower side and then I'm gonna do something in the middle as a transition. Um, but I think it looks awesome. And I am totally pumped on getting it finished. I haven't quite finished, figured out what we're gonna do with the baseboard. This is actually like a stainless steel um, piece of trim. On here, this white piece is literally just a covering that you can peel off. Um, I got some of that at the same place. I might use that around the baseboards. I don't know if I have enough of it for everywhere. But right now what I'm working on is getting this corner. I had to shave off this last uh, two by so this was all flush because I want to bring this right to a corner there so I don't have any like bumps. I didn't want to have to add some two by fours to square up the corner. So literally I just shaved that off with the Sawzall blade. A lot of this stuff that was done, for instance, this drywall above the plywood, it was done just to get the shop done to be able to get the guy that was using it into the shop so he could use it. It was not finished by any means. So what I'm doing is I'm coming back and I'm kind of thinking about it, trying to figure out different ways to do it or how I want to lay it out. And for instance, 
I'm gonna get rid of this drywall pieces. So we're gonna take the drywall down. We're gonna take this piece of OSB because it's the same thickness as that one. We're gonna move it over here, plop it there. And then I have a whole nother sheet in the other room that we're gonna cover this wall with. So we're gonna get rid of the drywall. But in this corner, the biggest problem that we have to deal with is this is where the water comes into the building. So this is the main shutoff. This little shutoff here goes to a faucet out front. So the PEX runs all the way up the wall, across the corner, over, and into the bathroom. So what I'm kind of thinking, I want to hide that, but it has to be accessible. So my thoughts are to create like a little box here that comes out and goes straight down and I'll have like a little countertop area. And basically the point of that is there's a lot of situations where I wanna move something from here maybe to the salvage workshop or I wanna set my wallet or my phone or some something there that I just wanna remember on the way out. That's the perfect little spot to do it because it's literally right by the door, right by where I lock everything up as I'm leaving. So I'm kinda of thinking a little built-in table would be perfect to, to basically hide, put a cabinet over and around that water so that it's out of the way and you don't see it. But when we put this board up, what we'll do is we'll tuck, we'll tuck the PEX tubing back into the corner and we'll build it in. And so I'll leave the heat tapes. The heat tape is essentially to, in the winter, you can plug it in and depending on how warm you keep the building, um, you can run that heat tape and it keeps the pipes from freezing. I don't want to lose the functionality of being able to do that, but at the same time, I don't want to also, I don't want to have to look at it. So the other thought is this whole wall, as you can see, I don't know if you can tell, you see how, how it's just wavy as heck. So behind this, there are our two by fours, but of, of a framing plan will be to take everything down to the studs here. We've got access to some uh, used three quarter inch plywood. It's actually what most of all of that wall and all that back wall is all covered in. And so my thought is we'll take three quarter inch plywood and literally just go right over the top of it. So for right now, what I'm working on is tearing into this, trying to figure out what is need, what I need to do to also flush up these. That's the, the reason I'm doing this is the, the drywall is shallower than the plywood. So there's a bump right there. No matter what I cover that with, it's gonna show. So I don't really want that happening. So the plan will be to, to adjust for it. This is one of the original walls of the building and it looks like they've got studs 24 inch on center, which is really, really under what it should be. see that all of this has been underwater. So I don't know if I mentioned it, but this shop has flooded multiple times and the creek next to it gets so high that the water level gets about that high. And I installed all the electrical in this building and every single piece of electrical, wiring, outlets, everything is at 66 inches above the ground. And so if it ever does that again, at least the electrical is above, it's like a foot and a half above the height it had ever been. This wire we see here is some of the old original wiring that goes into that room. So I will probably be replacing that, at least moving it up, get it out of the way. That's why that stuff's up there. Those are the lights. That's uh, just an outlet.
Love it. I like the combination of like rustic and clean combo here. Looking good. All right, check it out. Got a corner here. At the inside corner, outside corner, outside corner, and I started doing the inside corner there. I gotta do another small piece here and a small piece there. But we got the galvanized sheeting in there, wrapped around that pillar. The pillar is nice and flush. So I had to put a piece of plywood in there to fill that gap, and it was too thick. So I used my electric planer and planed the back side of that plywood down, and then it was slightly high on this side so I just used the planer and I kind of just went right over where you see the light section just to kind of feather it smooth it out so that when we get whatever we put there I haven't decided yet it will be flush smooth and you won't even see any bumps so yeah it's looking good don't know what we're doing for the top don't know what we're doing for the chair rail one of the big concerns here is if you listen in this room Hello, hello. It's very echoey in here. And so if I keep adding metal on the walls and everywhere, filming in here is gonna be a, a difficult task and it's gonna, the audio is gonna be bad. So I'm debating on doing some sort of uh, sound deadening panels on the ceiling. I've got a really cool idea here. Hopefully that'll take some of the sound echo out. Next up, the plan is to get that corner, and then we're going to continue ripping all those wall panels down to the studs. But I got to move all these cabinets first, which is why I started here, and I've kind of done pretty much everything I can do up to that, that section of wall. So, but yeah, what do you think? I think it's coming along. The goal here is to make this place look cool and somewhere where I enjoy to coming to work and working on projects and having people over and, and you know, something unique. I don't want it to be just your everyday shop. Check it out. So right inside the door, I completely ripped down the entire wall covering, moved all the cabinets and it was just so wavy. It had all that quarter inch material that was just, that had been gotten wet and warped so what do i find more problems this wall is essentially one of the very few walls that we didn't touch at all when we were doing the remodeling so there is where the water comes in right here so i'm going to build like a little cabinet around it so that you can get to that access to be able to shut it on and off but also to hide it and then this is one of the main posts that was originally there i added this little two by six just to throw something in there I was just gonna sheet right over this, but the more I looked at it, the more I realized that other than this post and that one that was rotten there, the entire loft in this section has no support at all. Um, and so you can see the, the two by fours were just like tagged on above this section. They used chunks of uh, pallet, like you see how they cut out that little notch would be part of a pallet where the forks would go in through to kind of frame up this, that wall. I don't know, it was about as poorly constructed as possible. And as much as I don't want the extra work, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put a treated, we're gonna build out. So essentially I'm gonna bring it out a two by four framed walls length. And then we'll put the sheeting right over the top of that. I'm not going to worry about how square this wall is because it does have a slight warp in it. The main reason I'm doing this is because all of these sections are just nailed in and not truly supporting the middle section here. Now we've got some support here, we've got some support in the very corner, and then we've got support back here where we reframed that section. There's support here, but this the majority of this run has very little. So I'm gonna basically build a two by four header. We're gonna take two two by fours and we'll stagger them, make a header that'll go from there all the way down to the end. 
And then the treated two by fours will go on the bottom just to be a weather barrier. And then we'll frame up the walls, studs, essentially 24 inch on center, just like this. So yeah, that's what I can come up with that's gonna be the best for the building in regards to truly making it stronger, but also being able to just cheat right over it because I wasn't even planning on going this far with it. But the more I look at it, the more I don't wanna be up there or have stuff stored up there that ends up falling on me, somebody, or some you know tools or Mainly people, honestly. The equipment and whatever, it can it could get damaged, so be it, but I don't want anyone getting hurt. So that is the plan. The water line essentially comes up right here. And so I will be putting that in the wall and then insulating all the way around it and potentially using some of this heat tape that you wrap around it to help in case it does freeze. Obviously we're adding heating and cooling to this building, but there's no guarantee that it's always gonna be heated and cooled. So this pipe will essentially get rerun. And then instead of it being on the surface here, we'll tuck it into the walls. Time to insulate. I got that half of the wall insulated. I've got the chunks already pre-cut. So I'm gonna put them all in there. And then what you do is you fold these tabs over and you staple. We'll fold that over like that. Fold this one over like this. And then boom.
insulation installed. I got the rest of that wall completely built. I got the galvanized metal on the lower, and right now I'm working on this red metal. So this is essentially just outdoor metal building sheet, and it was in the same pile of junk that I got this from, and I thought it would be a good upper portion. So in this corner here, I built a little cabinet around the water shutoff for the outside spigot and the water coming in. It's insulated and it's four screws. You can pull the panel off and get back in there to shut the water on and off. Plus it makes a nice little table for, you know, if you want something by the front door that, you know, you want, don't want to forget on your way out, stick it there. You know, I don't know what else we'll use it for, but it does nicely tidy up all that water, especially since the, the line is tucked back in the wall and goes all the way through there on back into the bathroom. So um, right now I'm working on getting these panels installed here and here, and then we'll work our way all the way around the rest of the room. But so far so good, it's looking nice. I'm gonna do some sort of a chair rail right along here that will trim that out. There's gonna be a trim down below. The ceiling is something that should be addressed at some point. I'm not gonna mess with it at the moment. I just wanna get this room usable and looking nicer. So all of this red metal has this protective coating on it um, that I will peel off when I get around to it and get it finished, but it's gonna look sweet. For now, we're just gonna get the upper wall covering on and go from there. All right, so this red that we got on the wall here actually has this coating on it, like this plastic protector. And we're gonna peel it off. It's got this really cool matte flat finish. And I was informed by my wife that you guys absolutely might enjoy the satisfaction of watching this get peeled off. I, I don't know about all that, but I'm gonna do it. All right, and just like that, way nicer looking. And so this stuff was in the pile, the same stuff that was galvanized. I didn't even know it had a coating originally. And I like that matte look a lot better. But I'm gonna do this on all the walls, all the way around, unpeel these, and then next up, we're gonna do chair rail and baseboards and kind of get this room finished up, really. Yeah, it's looking good. Check it out. So we got all of the plastic coating on the red peeled off. I got the chair rail all the way up. And so what we're using here is we're using old pallet wood that we've kind of chopped the pallets apart, took the pieces out. I've got other things we're going to be using pallet wood for here um, at the building. N nice thing is, is it, it can look nice and it's cheap. And so if something goes wrong with it, if you mess up, like I'm about to show you. So see all these baseboards? These are all also pallet wood. 
but we stained them all red mahogany, and I just, I don't like it. So we have already taken the baseboard off the entire, this side all the way around, and we're gonna put a taller baseboard, also pallet wood, but we've got a special treatment for it wood-wise. I'll show you that here in a second. So this whole area, we're gonna pull all the baseboards off, but it is really starting to come along. You can see, you know, that chair rail really does start to match or kind of blend that upper and lower paneling. So we're still gonna do some sort of crown molding. We're also thinking about doing something on the ceiling. Not quite sure exactly what, and I also don't know how we're going to lay this room out or what exactly it's going to be used for at the moment, but um, but yeah, it's coming along. So I will show you. So all the old stuff that we're pulling off the walls, we're actually going to reuse for part of the pallet wall in a few other areas. We're not going to discard it. We're just going to repurpose it. So now here's the plan. So we're going to use these as our baseboard and we're gonna do it in this style. So we're gonna burnish it. Or the other term is a shoshugiban. It's a Japanese term for burnishing something, I guess. We're gonna make it look awesome. So this is also a taller baseboard, which I think will look better. I really didn't wanna redo the whole thing, but at this point, you know, I only wanna do it and get it done once, because the second we put stuff up against the wall, it's not gonna move and it's not changing then. So now's the time to do it. So let's get this all fired up. Here's the weapon of choice, propane torch. Turn this knob a little bit. We'll light the pilot. So then it just keeps a flame. And then you just pull the trigger. And then you can get fire faster. Check it out. So there's our baseboards. Look at all that wood. Burnished and roughed up and looking nice. All the way, I did the little cut piece kind of in the middle so that the ends look better because there's a bigger chance of the middle having something against the wall and these ends kind of being a little more open. So, and then we got a little live edge kind of table here, kind of rounded the corner. Got that nailed down, got all the trim, all the small pieces are around. This piece will go right up there. And then I need to do another piece to cover this gap right there in the door. Similar how we did with this one. There's a piece of it angled, inverted. And we'll do the same in that crack 
all the way around. But we got the chair rail, it's a little lighter, kind of a grayish color. It's a sun faded already. But yeah, it's starting to really look nice. And then same with here, all the way along. And these walls, they're not perfect. They're not straight. There's, you know, we're we're polishing up a, a piece here, but sure is gonna look a lot nicer for, for us and the way we're gonna use it. Got that chair rail and that right there along. Got a couple more trim pieces to make out of the angle iron. One for the corner there, one for the corner here, one for the corner there. Got this corner piece installed all the way. So all this is salvaged materials. All this angle iron for the corners, all the pallets we got for free, all this metal, the galvanized on the bottom and the red on top was all in a pile, just at the same company we got the angle iron or the rounded corner. So that's one of the reasons that I have the ability to do projects like this even though it could cost a ton of money, but I don't go that route. I don't buy brand new materials. I find ways to repurpose stuff and you get creative and you start making use of what you have. Even this entryway, we didn't do anything to this. This is the same step was there. We just burned it. And now it's got that, that patinaed look. You know, I mean, that actually looks really nice right there. So, but the only thing in here we haven't touched is the ceiling and then we've got this gap here and a similar one on the other side at some point i would really like to do the floor but i don't want to do it the way that i probably should which is pour concrete i want to find one of those really nice heavy duty rubber floor mat situations where they interlock together and we could just cover the whole floor because whatever the heck, uh, I don't know, self-leveling compound that somebody put in, especially in this spot, it's just chipping up and peeling up like crazy. You can vacuum it a million times, but it's just gonna keep coming up. It's all cracked up. So that would be awesome. We could just chip the rest of this up and then just put that rubber floor mat right over this. And then it'll be a safer, cleaner environment to be able to manage on a regular basis rather than having all this trip hazards constantly peel up and you know get in our way but for now it's mostly just me here um and people that stop by and my brothers so i'm not overly worried about it we're just going to use it as is but man we are making a big dent on how this baby looks all right so we've been doing a bunch of work trying to get ready to do this 